women of the United States Army Auxiliary Corps, a volunteer organization recruited to relieve men for combat duty, now become a part of the regular army. Before their commander, Colonel Hobby, they take the oath of allegiance as regular soldiers. Serving in hundreds of jobs, such as chauffeurs and cooks, telephone operators and typists, they're relieving thousands of men for service at the front. And here's the first contingent to arrive in England, the largest unit of women ever sent overseas. Here, they'll staff training centers, man airports and control stations. And like all women, their first thought is to make themselves at home. Their first leave in a new land is a great adventure. They tour the beautiful English countryside. And at an historic manor house, they're introduced to a famous English custom, afternoon tea. British hospitality for America's service women overseas. In Hollywood studios, an army of skilled technicians produce hundreds of motion pictures every year. Today, the great studios work not only to supply entertainment to people at home, but have dedicated their resources to the armed forces wherever they serve. Army units assigned to making training films and to photograph action at the front learn camera technique from studio experts. In laboratories and cutting rooms, men in uniform are preparing their own productions. They study training films made by the industry and films made by their own signal corps. Whether it's how to put on a gas mask or how to handle a gun, everything is covered in Army motion pictures. The latest feature pictures, made for theaters, are reduced to 16 millimeter size for showings at army camps at home and overseas. Every week, army planes transport 150 features, some 200 newsreels and short subjects, to fighting forces around the world. In recreation centers, stars such as Ann Miller and Linda Darnell, John Garfield and Betty Davis are helping entertain servicemen. Lovely Greer Garson, little Judy Garland, beautiful Hedy Lamar, popular Betty Grable. At home and abroad, people of the motion picture industry are trying to do their bit for fighting men of the United Nations. Canada, at the famous fish hatchery of San Jovita, Quebec, game wardens sort and grade hundreds of thousands of young trout to replenish mountain streams and lakes. Airplanes are used to reach remote bodies of water. Taking the fish aloft, they restock the lakes, dropping the trout from the air. First customers, French-Canadian soldiers home on leave. This is any soldier's idea of a well-earned vacation from the war. There's a five-pound trout on that line, and they land him like veteran fishermen. A real meal, this, right out of the water. The regiment of Filipino infantry in the United States Army receives the one weapon they know best, the Philippine bolo knife. Used in cutting through jungles, the bolo is equally effective in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Filipinos, young and old, have a long and outstanding score to settle with the Japanese invaders of their native land. Today, armed with native weapons, augmenting their modern equipment, they are eager to meet the enemy.
cadets, a thousand miles from the sea, learn the technique of flying with the fleet. In battle formation, they take off for their floating base of operations on one of America's Great Lakes. Formerly the world's biggest side wheel passenger steamer, she's now the training carrier Wolverine. Student pilots land and take off from her 550 feet flight deck under conditions identical to those at sea. An inland carrier training 10,000 new Navy fighter pilots a year. Lieutenant General Patton, commanding the American 7th Army in Sicily, leaves headquarters in an armored car as United Nations forces continue to sweep northward in their drive to occupy the entire Italian island. Enthusiastic Sicilians welcome the Yanks with open arms, scenes that are repeated in town after town as the Americans press on to Palermo. Civilians, eager to cooperate, voluntarily surrender their weapons to the Allied authorities. Local officials are enlisted to assist in the distribution of much needed food and medical supplies. Palermo, nerve center and capital of the island, is surrendered by the Italian commander who rides with American General Keyes into the city. Palermo's harbor, blasted by Allied bombers, is blocked to all Axis shipping. The occupation of Palermo by United States forces, a dramatic and historic moment for the people of Sicily. General Patton is greeted by members of the clergy as his victorious Seventh Army moves in. For thousands of war-weary Sicilians, the coming of United Nations forces means freedom from fascism. For youngsters riding aboard the Army's famous Jeep, it's the dawn of a new day.